Dragons, one of my favourites. You know, what were the dragons? Were they just myths? Were they just stories that people made up? What, who did, what, what was Beowulf up to? Or what was St George up to? What were, they, what were they fighting? Was it just stories made up to tell around the fire? Or were they actually fighting real animals? Did these people actually kill the last of the dinosaurs? Because remember, uh, the word dinosaur wasn't invented until 1842 by a gentleman called Richard Owen, who founded the uh, Natural History Museum, I believe, one of the history museums in London. And he coined the term dinosaur to describe these fossils that they were digging up, huge animals which were unlike anything that we see today. So before, what were they called? Well, they were probably called dragons. Okay, let's, let's have some evidence. Let's talk about a bit of evidence for, for dinosaurs actually being around for George and Beowulf and other people like him to go and kill. Well, somebody, a gentleman, a German living in Mexico called um, Valdemar Julesrund, or something like that, dug up, uh, discovered some clay figurines, clay and stone figurines, which were dated to uh, a civilization in Mexico which existed from between about uh, 800 and 200 AD. And here are, here are pictures of just some of these figurines. Actually, they discovered about 30,000 different figurines, all made out of clay and stone, every single one of them different, all handcrafted. And some of them just a few inches long, some of them are actually three feet high. And about a third of them appear to be these creatures, dinosaurs. And they've actually been looked at by dinosaur experts, and you can pretty much tie up against known types of dinosaur, like Triceratops, Stegosaurus, uh, Diplodocus, even T-Rex, Dimetrodon, and other dinosaur species. So th these things are rather, rather bizarre, because if they are actually as old as uh, the archaeologists say they are, uh, 2,000 years old, how did these people manage to construct uh, really reasonably, reasonably close approximations to dinosaurs if they'd never actually seen a dinosaur walking around? Well, that's a good question. So the, the uh, one solution is that they did actually see dinosaurs wandering around in the Mexican uh, grasslands, and they, they made pictures of what they saw. Because well, the other figures are of just ordinary, everyday things. They're ordinary, everyday animals, uh, ordinary, ordinary, everyday objects. But it's not just in Mexico you find these interesting objects, but in, um, in Peru, there's a, a, a variety of Peruvian tomb art from the, the Nazcar era, and they basically, in their tombs, they included ceremonial burial stones with different carvings on them, all sorts of different things. And they had quite an advanced culture. And back in the 1930s, people started uh, collecting these stones, and they started noticing there were some rather funny things on them. This is from a website, www.bible.ca, if you want to look it up. There's quite a lot more information there. And they found uh, stones like this one, which appears to have a man riding on a, uh, what appears to be a triceratops. And here we have another one of this a guy appearing to fight, be fighting a couple of allosaurs, kind of Jurassic Park. You know, it, it wasn't all fiction, perhaps. And other stones have animals that look a bit like uh, Diplodocus. The Diplodocus is actually very interesting because the, the, I haven't got a picture of it, unfortunately, but according to the text, uh, these had spines on them, which until recently didn't have any support in the, um, the scientific literature, until recently when they discovered skins, a skin of Diplodocus fairly well preserved with spines on them. But prior to that period, back in 1992, um, uh, Nobody had actually observed these things, yet they were already on these carvings, on these stones, which were dated, have been dated to about uh, 700 AD, so about uh, 1,300 years old. So these things are turning up all over the place. And I could go on about petroglyphs and other places in, uh, in uh, North America, in Australia. But I want to have a look at uh, another interesting one in Cambodia, in uh, Angkor, Angkor, where there's... Um, a very large temple is a, is a, a photograph of the, their web page, uh, which talks about uh, the, these uh, interesting artifacts. And here we have uh, a picture of one of the uh, carvings, a glyph it's called, on the temple complex at Angkor Wat. And it looks rather like a stegosaur. And here we have a picture of a stegosaur next to it. And you can see the similarities. It's got, it's got the, the short neck, head down low. We've got, this, we've got the, the, the plate-like uh, growth on the back and a short tail. The, the resemblance is rather startling, and this is carved in a temple which is supposed to be about 800 years old. How do they know what it looked like? 
if they didn't actually see the thing because they didn't have the internet. They couldn't go and look at pictures of dinosaurs and say, oh, I like this picture. Oh, let's draw one of these. They didn't, they didn't, they hadn't, nobody dug up these fossils. Nobody reconstructed these fossils until the 1800s. So the question is, how did they know what it looked like if they didn't actually see it? Let's come a bit closer to home. Let's go to Carlisle Cathedral. There's a Bishop Bell who's buried in Carlisle Cathedral. He was buried in 1496. And he's got a, a brass tombstone, or brass tomb plating on the floor. You actually walk over it when you walk up the main, uh, main aisle, I believe. There's a carpet over it, so you don't damage it. Um, and if you lift the carpet, you find objects drawn, carved in the, in the, in the brass work. And you've got ordinary animals that we recognize today, like a horse, a sheep, dog, a cow. You've got other, other carvings, which are, which are fairly rapidly very easily recognized from everyday objects you see today. And then there are these two objects. Unfortunately, the photograph isn't so good, so we lose a bit of uh, resolution up here. It's kind of washed out by the, the flash, which is around here. But uh, I haven't seen them myself, but uh, my father has, and he says they look just like a diplodocus. Uh, now, to go there, uh, they, get, they, get, they got rather annoyed with people wanting to look at this tombstone, and you have to get written permission now from the bishop before you can lift the carpet and have a look at it because so many creationists have gone there with their cameras trying to take pictures of these things. But they are, they, are, they are there at Carlisle Cathedral. And again, the question is, if nobody had dug up a dinosaur until the 1840s or 1800s, early 1800s, and if the term hadn't been invented uh, actually until the 1800s, where did they get the idea to draw these animals on this tomb of this bishop? Well, where did the other animals come from? There were animals that were out there. They could look at and they could see them and they would copy them and put pictures on the tombstone. Why not? And why not include a Diplodocus if you happen to have a Diplodocus wandering around Carlisle Cathedral? Well, there's, is there another explanation for how these things got there? Personally, I'm very happy with the idea that dinosaurs were actually wandering around Great Britain back in the Middle Ages. And this is why you have the, the legends of people going out and killing dragons. St. George probably did kill a dragon. He killed a dinosaur. He might well have contributed to wiping out the last re uh, of species of dinosaur left on this planet. Rather unfortunate uh, from a point of view of uh, species and biodiversity, but there you have it. So I have no problem with that because that fits exactly what we read in the Bible. If you read the Bible and take it at face value, you find it talks about creatures that can only be dinosaurs.